Tune in. Hi. <laughs> right. Well, thank you all very much, and it's a pleasure to have you all here today. I know you've been through some fairly weighty briefings today, so I'll try to keep this short. Usually. <laughs> No, you know, usually at functions like this, when the person who's put the event together has been doing a great job, I offer my congratulations. So having said that, you know I'm not just being a proud father when I say I think Maureen has been doing a terrific job, and I'm proud of all she's been accomplishing. Even though he couldn't be here today, I thanks also go to Frank Ferenkoff, our able, dedicated chairman. And, uh, and, uh, and today, we're all part of a coalition that will carry on the fight for our, our ideals long after this administration has ended. Republican women are playing a vital and indispensable role, and I just want to thank each and every one of you for what you're doing. You're here representing 45 states and I hope after this conference, you'll go back ready for action. Yeah. In these last six years, we've seen a dramatic rise in the number of Republican women seeking public office. And we want that trend not only to continue, but to accelerate. If Republicans capture a minimum of 67 more key seats in state legislatures throughout the country, the GOP will control half of the nation's state legislative chambers. Now, it's imperative that we make these kind of gains before reapportionment in 1991. I believe Republican women will be instrumental in this battle. They'll give us the edge needed to push us over the top. The issues are with us. The challenge is getting the word out. Our policies have given the American people economic growth, stable prices, and international peace. Our opponents offer rhetoric. We offer accomplishments. We threw out the old CETA program. We put in place the Job Training Partnership Act, which provides more training for every tax dollar spent. We're moving to reform the federal welfare system. We're focusing our efforts on strengthening the family and giving the less fortunate incentives to work and get off of public assistance. Now, having been a governor myself, I firmly believe that certain tasks, like job training and welfare, are better managed and more effectively administered at the state and local level. I remember my horror when I was governor at finding out that certain well-intentioned programs for the needy had an administrative overhead of $2 for every dollar that reached the needy. It can be done better than that. Most of you represent state and local government, and there's one thing of which I'm proud during these last six years. It is that we've turned around the trend that was centralizing all power and decision-making in Washington. We Republicans believe in federalism, and in these last six years, together, we've proven it works. Our opponents still have a three-part standard solution for just about every problem. More federal controls, more federal spending, higher federal taxes. Nowhere is the difference between us more distinct than in education. The opposition would tax away local revenue, hand it back to local school officials, minus a carrying charge, and loaded with federal regulations. <laughs> uh, our approach has been to mobilize the American people, to encourage them to get out personally involved, demand higher standards, discipline, and education. I was recently at Tuskegee University, and by the applause I received, I'm certain they agree that it's time Americans stood shoulder to shoulder to get drugs off our campuses and out of our schoolyards. <laughs> And now that I've broached the subject, let me just say I'm proud of all the women who are part of our administration, but there is one special one. I get letters all the time saying how much the parents of America 
appreciate the effort she's making to combat the evil of drugs. She's my number one Republican lady. My, my <laughs> Good guess, too. <laughs> My roommate, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy came up with the phrase, just say no, when she was speaking with some youngsters in a school, and it's become the rallying cry all across our land. There are now more than 12,000 just say no clubs in schools across the country. I just wish they could learn to do that in Congress when some of those spending bills come up. <laughs> Challenges remain. Coming to grips with federal deficit spending is one of them. In these last 20 months, we'll be pushing for fundamental reforms that will get to the heart of the problem. The first would be to give the President what 43 governors already have, a line-item veto. But if we're going to do the job right, we've got to enact what Thomas Jefferson thought was the one element missing from the Constitution, and he so announced at the time of ratification, and that is a prohibition on the government's right to borrow. In other words, a constitutional amendment requiring a balanced budget. Now, I'd prefer to let Congress do this. But like I wrote the minority leader of the Montana State Senate, if Congress refuses to act, I'll go to your states in support of a constitutional convention and put this issue before the people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when all is said and done, no one's family budget in America is going to be safe until we get the federal budget under control. Part of the solution, as I say, lies in fundamental reform. You know, I have to tell you, having been at the state end of it, there isn't a state in the union that would put up with the Mickey Mouse operation that is called the budget process here in Washington. <laughs> and let's not kid ourselves, it also depends on electing more responsible Republicans to the House and retaking control of the United States Senate. Now, last year, we lost one of the two Republican women in the United States Senate, and I think next year we should not only gain that back, but add a few more in the process. Each and every one of you can play a key role in two ways. First, by being a candidate yourself for the Senator House, and second, by being a mentor to encourage other women to run for office. This is a challenge that I hope you'll seriously consider. Our political adversaries believe the gains we've made these last six years were a fluke. I think they were the product of a team effort and a great deal of hard work. Today, we're better organized and more committed than ever before. Meetings like this with dedicated women like you are preparing to meet the challenge ahead, and, we're going to, and you're going to give us the edge. So I thank you again for all you're doing. We need your continued help and support. I just want to close with just a set of figures that I don't think enough people in this country are aware of. I know American people believe in fair things, being fair and so forth, and I also know that they believe in the system of checks and balances. Well, there hasn't been much of a system of checks and balances in the last 56 years, because for 46 of those 56 years, the Democrats have controlled both houses of the Congress and had then one house for six years. And every Democrat president has had both houses of a Democratic Congress, except for one two-year period in Harry Truman's regime. Republican presidents, on the other hand, have only had one session two years with both houses Republican. The rest of the time, and I've had six years of one house, uh, and now we're back to them having the two houses again. But there's something decidedly unfair. And again, this comes around to the redistricting that's gone on. 
How many of you know that in election after election, more Americans have voted for Republican congressmen than have voted for Democrats, but they elect the majority? They've got all of us herded up in as few districts as possible throughout the country. And it's time for us to straighten this out. Well, well God bless you. And now, that's why we hurried through without shaking hands when we're coming through. Nancy and I are going down to the blue room there and uh, hopefully have a chance to greet each one of you and shake your hand. All right. Thank you. <laughs> See you at the end of the line. <laughs> See you at the end of the line. <laughs>